Ricardo and I'm still in the Inquisitive Badger. Now, I finally reached one of my waypoints for this week on my trip to Colonia, which is Gagarin Gateway. Gagarin Gateway is in the Gru Haipui system or sector of space, but in particular the Gru Haipui KS-T D3-31. Now this epic voyage started off with me doing the Professor Palin unlock, which required me to go 5,000 light years away from my starting system, which was in Cozy. But it, I got a bit carried away and couldn't go back. So, if you do like what you see, it's all documented on my YouTube channel. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Like all the populated systems I've found out here, and this sector has about 10,000 user population, there's a nav beacon. The nav beacon will indeed populate your navigation panel and you'll be able to find Gagarin Gate without any issues. As you can see the system, lots of planets, lots of landable planets as well. And because we're virtually in the heart of a nebula as well, it's, the sky is filled with the beautiful sort of like rich red um, and crimsons, which really is nice. So you can see on the screen, I've gone to the system map and located Gagarin Gate. Now it was quite a strange approach to Gagarin Gate. As you can see, it's on the dark side of what you think is the dark side of the planet. Um, I thought, right, well, we're in for a right black video this time. But as I got closer, and we can see better as I switch to the external camera, the colors change from black into red and crimson. It really was quite spooky how it happened. The shades just came on quite progressively. And there you can see at the top of the ASP window or ASP cockpit, that was the nebula I was talking about. And you can see it's all around a completely different sky to what we're used to from being in the bubble. And as I've traveled to all these different systems on my way to Colonia and Jack Station, I really am astounded at how much thought and how graphically beautiful the game is. Frontier have put a hell of a lot of time and effort into this in creating a galaxy as as they envis envisage it. Um, and, and that's only an added bonus of the player. And if you do manage to get out here, and I really do suggest that at least in your lifetime of play in this game or in the game's lifetime, that you do. And hopefully community missions will bring people out here. Um, that you'll experience, you know, the graphical enhancements that they've put into the game. To me, it's, it's astounding. I think it's fantastic. Anyway, here we are on Approach Gagarin Gate. Uh, Gagarin Gate, several launch pads, landing pads, as it were, all set on this sort of like red-hued planet. Now at the end of this video, I've got several snapshots that I've put together, like a sort of a photo album or a montage of what I've collected on my way down to the base. Now it's got adverts for core dynamics, adverts for ships, even though this base does not have a shipyard and it does not have an outfitting facility. You can refuel, you can repair, you can hand in your cartographic data, which I'll do in a moment. A nicely set out base, roads here and there, it's well lit, and big honking great big defense guns, as you can see on the right hand side. But as usual, there's a storage yard, which you can drive around, some of the roads, and quite a busy port. I didn't see any in-game players here considering it's on the road to Colonia. But when I did get there, there were several ships, NPC ships, taking on and taken off and landing. But other than that, nobody else currently in the area. There's been a few commanders that I've been mentioning in the comments sections of my other videos, but they're 
either a few days behind me or a few days ahead of me, but I so far have not seen any players on the trip. And I suppose sometimes that could be a good thing. Because you want to get to your destination and hopefully some of the greater players out there won't go and attack a little old asp with a, with a single engineered beam laser in it. Although I did get pulled out the other day by an NPC uh, in a Cobra at dangerous level and fortunately I was able to see him off. So here I am selling my cartographic data. 2.3 million just over and quite a few systems discovered as well. As I've been making my way towards Colonia, I have discovered many different systems and planets. And that's quite good because you get your name on the game. You know, you're embazened in elite history of having discovered those planets and systems. Now, hey, <clears throat> there's something to be said. You could say you're actually in the credits or been a part of exploration. That's up to you. I found it quite gratifying, to be perfectly honest with you. So missions within Colonia, even though I'm allied with, allied with the faction, and let's be fair, I was expecting one or two missions. What I was expecting, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to store up all my cartographic data when I get to the next section, which I think is going to be um, is it Polo Base or Polo Outpost. And then on from there, be a couple of couple of hundred hops, I suppose, between there and Colonia. So I've been out and about in the SRV to get a better idea of what's going on around the base because, you know, you landed on a landing pad. There's only so much you can see before you reach the extent of the external camera. Putting the lights on, main beam. I think we'll have a good old look at some of the structures. And these structures, you know, they look very office-like, very business-like. You can tell that a lot of design has gone in there to make it look like an operating spaceport, even though it's out in the frontier. I didn't know what those two were. I haven't seen those two yellow grills um, on any other structure. They just stood out at me. I probably have. I've probably driven right past them. However, I haven't seen them or it hasn't, I haven't made a mental note of noticing those before. So we're just zooming now over the storage yard. And the camera shakers from the rough terrain from the SRV. It is a shame, I feel, that it's not enough missions to be had or to be done out here, even if it's just ferrying people to Colonia or ferrying supplies to Colonia. I think a little bit more thought could have been put in um, in regards to the mission systems, bearing in mind people only really come out here to go one place. So the next um, starport over obviously would need supplies and perhaps long distance missions of even like 35 hops or 30 hops on the Neutron Star Super Highway would be something. Or even go out here, scan this planetary body and report back with this scientific data. Maybe these missions will come on later in the game as more and more updates and Frontier listens to the community. Who knows? And those lampposts always remind me of the Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe. I don't know why, they just do. Here I am with a view inside the cockpit. You can see, compared to your SRV, how big the buildings are in the scale of the game. And given all this bumpy terrain, it's nice to get onto a bit of road, no matter how short it is. One thing I have noticed as well is that the cartographic data and handing in of that cartographic data, given how much I've travelled, hasn't really gone up that much. I think I landed here with about 37%. And I wouldn't have thought it would have gone up much more than that. So the trip to Elite for exploration, for me, I think, is taking a hell of a long time. Trading, 
relatively straightforward. Everyone does a bit of trading, and I've been trading in this game since I started day one. And all that helps to accumulate your rank. Although the exploration bit, I'm finding difficult. And I'm currently about 37%, like I said, of Ranger. So other aspects of the base include these lovely solar panels. The admin buildings that we've seen already. As I switch to the ship, now I get a better view as well of what the base looks like as opposed to the SRV. And swinging around from inside the cockpit view, again, you're hit with that sense of scale of this outpost against what you are with your ship. Would be nice to see a bit more, bit more life on the building structures as well. I mean, other than just the lights flickering on and off and the adverts changing. I think it would be nice to see other things, perhaps even NPC land transport moving back and forth or just going out into the wilderness, as it were. And quite funny as well that there was no Guardian drones here. Perhaps they think that because they're in the middle of the nowhere, what are they possibly going to be guarding? But other bases have them, and I think that would have helped to the, add to the ambience of Kagarin Gate. Now, Gagarin Gate is named after Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. And I think it's been an apt tribute to him as well. And of course, Elite Dangerous has several tributes to people of popular culture and history, including George Lucas, Lennon Nimoy, the great late Lennon Nimoy, Carrie Fisher with Fisher's Rest, and this, Gagarin. Also on this journey, we've seen Abmudson Terminal. And... Hillary outpost. Though, not a testament to Hillary Clinton, I understand, but Hillary the Explorer. So as I mentioned, at the end of this video, there is a slideshow. And as I leave now Gagarin Gate, I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the channel. There's much more video and exploration on there, along with other retro games on the Atari ST and ZX Spectrum. I've been Ricardo, and this has been Elite Dangerous. This has been a Gagarin base. See you soon, and fly safe.